Welcome to Pat Sherlock's podcast series, interviews with top mortgage sales leaders. Learn practical tips for improving sales management results. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. This is Pat Sherlock, and welcome to the podcast. Today's topic is increasing sales performance investment in a challenging market. My guest today is Stephanie McGuire. She's SVP of Lending at Americu. Stephanie has had a long career in financial services with companies such as Sunmark, Watertown Savings, and others. Hi, Stephanie. Good morning. How are you? Good. Well, this is an important topic, but before we jump into the main topic, let's talk about how you got into the mortgage world. Sure. Mortgages were something that I sold and and underwrote and lent years and years ago, being in branch administration, always close to lending. And I made a pivot, a major pivot in 2007, which was a remarkable year just before the fall of the industry. But I wanted to get very vested in the industry itself of mortgage. I could see that it was growing in its capabilities and requirements, and I wanted to know more about it. So I made a pivot at that point and and went into a credit union then to start up a mortgage division. Well, you've seen it in good times and bad times, right? All the times. Absolutely. And I think that speaks to some of what we're going through today, for sure. Well, I'm glad that you shared that because sometimes people only think about the good times. We have the other side, which is also part of our market. Well, let's talk about some of the challenges that you have in your current position. When we look at where mortgage lending is today, there's either those really, it's feast or famine. And I think now to get the right players on your team to scale their capability and scale the capability of the organization, that's our biggest challenge. And we're starting where other organizations are ahead necessarily on that front, but we're making giant leaps forward to get to where we want to be for the size of our organization. So I think our biggest challenge currently is getting the right staff and the timing of that, and then keeping the fluency and the capacity so we can grow and scale. Well, they're all good points for sure. So when you look at the difficult market that we have today, what have you made any changes in your managing style? We've been more focused and diligent on our approach when we take a look at verifying, testing, and truly understanding the capacity of our players. That approach is something that's evolved out of having a variation of seasoned resources available where ones that have been in the industry to ones that are starting and are ones that just really want to grow in the industry. So we've had to really change the approach to a more dialed in, hands-on understanding, and we call it test and verify, you know, the knowledge of the individuals that we employ. So we're confident that they're confident. And that's one of the main, I think, ingredients of having successful players is to understanding their competency. So it's a very hands-on approach. Well, I agree with that 100% for sure. Also, share what you think are some trends that the remaining part of the year, this has been certainly an interesting year, a volatile year. So what do you see happening in the remaining part of 2023? I think one of the main successes that can be had is the amount of diligence that's put forth with your resources on their follow-up on their understanding of pre-approvals and you know reorganizing those pre-approvals and readdressing them with borrowers, educating borrowers so borrowers know what options are out there in a rising rate environment, how to properly structure it so it's, they still get the best of affordability as well as reach on the purchase money market and understanding what the competition has and being able to offset different features, benefits of what's being out there other than price. And I think that's what the biggest shift has been when you look at this year from last year, and it's going to continue on, is to be able to speak to outside of just price, but really get around what the borrower's goals are and and get them focused on true comparisons that are meaningful to them. So it's really getting staff to refocus on that and stay focused on that follow through. Well, that's a terrific lead in to what we're going to talk about today, because what you're talking about is how important the differentiator is, is really at the loan officer level and their interaction with the realtor and with the borrower. So let's start off with defining in this 
more difficult market when you have resource issues, increasing your investment in sales performance. What does that mean to you and, and how have you approached it? This year in particular, we saw an opportunity because we're scaling in our number and our full-time equivalents and our higher rate. So we had to find an approach that was going to work with bringing people on quickly, swiftly, but effectively. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I find is key to do that is ensure that you've got the right support and reinforcement to do that. And we looked at consulting, bringing in experts to also test and verify and afford those sales individuals the right sales pieces for proper acumen and to get them set up for the greatest level of success by creating good habits and really reinforcing the basics but beyond just basic selling but the reinforcing type selling that you're visible you're reliable you're relevant and in your thought of and those behaviors and activities are really what's driving the success and will continue to drive the success because it's not just the rate now you've got to outperform others. So we made a very diligent move to infuse and invest in our sales team early on to not only vet their capabilities, but to reinforce the right ones. So we know when they hit the street and the marketplace, they have the confidence and capacity and capability to really outshine the rest. So we really took to getting down to basic, I look at it as boot camp. Mm -hmm. type exercises and interactions with them and training so that they we know what they look and sound like before they start to engage with the borrowers. So Stephanie, talk about, and you've seen the markets good and bad, and certainly when you move into a more difficult market like now, usually resources, it's really hard to argue for increasing investment and going to top management to talk about, well, we need to actually improve our sales force. What was that type of sell for you about, and was, was there a difficulty with getting that accomplished because you're really making investment in the future by investing in your sales staff? I think that's the main point that all too often we think that the training is, you know, just a just a span of information. And then there's a hope that it's that they're graduating with the right competencies. Mm -hmm. And our point that we made here was invest in your people and the people bring the return. And in this market, your people really have to be that level of return um, for the for the department and division because they they own that sale. They own the capability of getting that business. So we looked at it as it's the right investment to get the right return, both short term in a very competitive landscape today, but also in the long term because we've made that investment and then they're going to grow and their success is going to grow in alignment with the company. And so when you look at the investment personally in them, talk about the technology side of it. In other words, did you also make that type of an investment? We did. We made a very strategic change to the infrastructure from last year to this year, and we invested in a point of sale and a new loan operating system that's state of the art that gets the opportunity to have information exchange as well as application at the fingertip of the borrower. So it takes minutes to interact as well as a clean line of submission, safe and sound line of submission to get information passed to us and we had to get it into the hands of the mobile user, the online user, the telephone exchange, whatever medium that the borrowers want to engage with us, we had to be ready and we have to be able to promote that accessibility. So was that difficult to get? Certainly it's a lot of technology changes also occurring while you're investing in the loan officer's skill set. Was that difficult to get everybody on board? What we did was involve the sales team very strategically so we didn't distract, but we allowed them to get into a sandbox and, and adventure mm -hmm. and help build out as it was being implemented. We invested in a consultant to help with the implementation and the training, and it was very hands-on by unit, by user. Mm -hmm. So the sales force was an instrumental driver of how the system was to be used, what adjustments were needed, and how it should perform. So they could just gravitate and grab a hold of that new capability and run with it. So it was very, very easy transition for them. Mm -hmm. And 
that it's state of the art. There's some that are coming obviously with a background with it. So it's been a win-win for us all across the board. Sales has adapted well. So how have you measured success? Because you're now making investments in this investment and it's in a difficult market. So talk about, I guess, two-prong effort. You made it on technology and then you also made it on personal development. How did you measure the success of whether these types of investments were actually working and producing what you were anticipating? We keep a close watch on turn and pull through. It's not a new concept, obviously, with lending and in the mortgage industry, but we took a very concerted look from the onset of implementing the new technology that could tell us mm -hmm. in a moment's notice what we need to know and have sight line to. We look at the turn of our application from the moment that it's touching the system to the time that it's being decisioned in the system as well as we looked at the pull through of the individuals to see are we getting the the expected pull through from the investment meaning are they able to demonstrate competency and confidence that the borrowers are coming back they're pulling through their information and it's the diligence that they're turning on their pre-approvals so that's a key indicator for us if they're going to be successful you know, hit some home runs early on, and then, you know, likewise, earn more business. So those are the key factors for us that we keep a very close eye on. So when you looked at the technology investment and the personal development side of it, what has been the improvement since you've impl implemented this strategy? We have individuals that from very early on and looking back a span of time working with a lot of origination mm -hmm. individuals, we have people that are coming out from these investments much more skilled and quicker to adapt to market. And so therefore their pull through and their ramp up time, we've lessened the curve, we've mm -hmm. shortened it. So they can hit the street more successfully in their marketplaces with more competence. It'll stand out. We are getting people that are getting two and three referrals from one ask or mm -hmm. one interaction where normally it would take weeks and months. Well, that's the best type of return when you're actually showing it in your production, which is what you were saying, that you're seeing that investment, let's say in personal development, translated into more production, even in a more difficult market. Correct. We we moved several rankings up when you look at the top 300 mm -hmm. leaderboard, and it, it was it's such an impressive movement for an organization that's made this investment in the last three years in mortgage banking. And I think the key to it is the attention that we give to these individuals so they can drive the success. Now, of course, they're supported by a very slick, you know, and without gap you know, processing team, underwriting team, right. and closing funding. So we, we've got to attribute success all across the board when you raise the expectation up in the division. But that too requires the hands-on test and verify to ensure that we're supporting sales to get the return sale, to get the reputation that you want, you know, on the sale that you would want to repeat or share with your friends and family. So it's an all-in investment but the heaviest part is making sure that your talent on the street can win can win the business and so when you look at and this is obviously many lenders and many loan officers have had production decreases 50 percent or more and so what you're doing is really really going against the the normal thinking where you just cut back and try to weather the storm you're actually being proactive and it's translated into a greater market share is what you're saying it has, and that's the strategy, if you will, that for us, we have to keep going in the direction of scaling and being able to service the membership that we have in the counties that we serve. So to do the right thing, we have to build out staff, but we're building it very succinctly and carefully to be most competent, and it's being compared to you know, other organizations, mm -hmm. I think we're more prominent, you're more relevant, you're more visible, and you're more capable. So it's it's proven to be a good strategy for us. Well, some institutions, some lenders certainly want to try to build it in-house. It sounds like you made the decision of not doing that. Talk about that decision. What I have found in many years with this industry is that it can take a very long period of time to do some book training. It can take a very short amount of time if you do some overview and observation within the unit. And I don't know of any area in any 
particular institution that does it really well in-house mm -hmm. to provide the results that we're all looking for. So we look at outsourced resources and vendors that you can partner with. And I think that's a key driver to success is that you need to bring the expertise to the individuals. You need to provide the time and the environment to them to learn effectively and appropriately and, and to hold expectations that are in conjunction with you know, their every day in, day out responsibilities. And I think when you bring a vendor or a vendor partner in, it gives you that supplemental sure. emphasis support that you wouldn't necessarily have on staff or have it devised and laid out. And so when you think about, uh, usually lenders want to try to build internally, and this decision of outsourcing has translated into, obviously, great results quickly. Um, and so has that made your recruiting, has that word gotten out on the street that, that you are obviously being proactive versus some of the companies that certainly are really hunkering down? Has it helped in your recruiting? It has. We've seen a dramatic difference from last year to this year to what people are understanding in the marketplaces about our commitment and our level of focus for the mortgage industry. So we have people coming to us wanting to be part of that. They see mm -hmm. that there's some downsizing and rearranging and less opportunity, and they want to align with an organization that's on a growth and a committed level to scaling their operation. And that's a different conversation today. We have to do it smartly, we have to do it economically, but we also have to do it where it allows us to build the right foundation with the right players. So people are turning to us and looking at us where within the last couple of years that was not the case. And so if you had to put a percentage on, on how that's impacted your recruiting, has it been 10, 20 percent or you've seen it where it's been much larger than that? I would say, based on the most recent hires in the last year, it's been at least a third of it, mm -hmm. if not more, because what people know in the industry, and they all look around, and it's a sure. small world that we're living, they, they understand where there's opportunity and there's commitment, and they're, by design, you've got the right things happening, and that's what our recruitment efforts have said to us back in candidacies. They've indicated that it's a different place today. There's different commitment levels, and they're lacking that in some of the existing roles that they have. And they want more. They want to be that much more successful, but they want to be cared about and invested in so they have long-term success. So that has brought us greater, stronger candidates. And, and so better quality candidates because... Sure, uh, sure. Great point. Well, the time has flown by. We only have a couple minutes left. A couple of takeaways uh, you'd like to share with the audience, especially about you made this investment in a more difficult market. So it says that certainly your vision is certainly very strong. I think one of the major takeaways for us has been invest at the right time in the right things. And when you invest with the right level of support and training in your people, it's one of the greatest investments that you can make, especially during a time where they can afford to pick up these better qualities, behaviors, attributes, and learnings and put it to the best use because now is the right time to be all things that you need to be for your borrowers, which is on top of your game, ahead of the pre-approval, the diligence and the follow-up and doing the outreach. So we feel it's the right investment for the short-term and long-term success of our players and it's the right thing to do for your borrowers because they need a lot of support today. Well, I think you've nailed it for sure and it certainly translates into the results that you've had. So congratulations on all that you have done. And certainly I appreciate you sharing your wisdom today with us. And I want to thank all our listeners for spending time with us. Thanks so much, Stephanie. Thank you. Thanks for listening to our podcast. We appreciate you spending time with us. If your sales team needs training in hiring and lead generation, schedule a free consultation by emailing me at pshirlock at qfsconsulting.com.